For the past nine years, groups of volunteers known as street pastors have been going out on the streets of Cork City with the simple mission of looking out for the safety of those they come across who may need their help. Father, we just thank you for the opportunity of being able to go out and to serve in the streets. Tonight we just pray for peace out there. We pray for an absence of violence. We pray for safety for the doormen, for the emergency crews, for the guards. Uh, we pray safety on people that are just enjoying themselves. We mm. pray they'd have a good night and give us compassion for those that we're going to meet so that we indeed can be the ones to bring them some peace in their situation. Mm. I ask you that in Jesus' name. Yeah. Mm. Street Pastors is a worldwide movement of Christians from many different denominations that got off the ground in Ireland in 2012. David Hohey was one of the people who was there from the very beginning. We did have a, a, a ministry to homeless people on the street, uh, not just homeless, but people who wanted to hang out, because in some cases they just weren't happy living at home, so they hung out late at night, um, and we would bring them soup sandwiches, coffee, um, up by, along by the river. So we went to um, uh, we went to a conference in Dublin about engaging the different spheres of society. Found out about street pastors uh, in London. Four of us went over there to work with them on a weekend, and um, it took it from there. It was with students, and that was, it was great. What is a typical night like? There isn't a typical night, that's the whole point. Some Saturday nights can be a bit overwhelming because you meet people with their own personal difficulties. Um, there can be a range of things from somebody's lost their mobile phone, they need to contact someone at home, to uh, it could be a sexual assault. Really? Yeah. It can get that serious? Oh, it can. You can. We've had physical assaults, we've had people, we'd have to look after them until we can get them uh, hospitalised. Um, but we have people who just need to contact somebody because they're disorientated, had a few drinks, can't find their phone and their buddies are gone. How has your own strong faith, Dave, pushed you and drove you to do the work you're doing? It's not so much being driven, it's more being led by it and answering what I believe is, is, is a bit of a call to go and, and do this. It's an opportunity to live out our faith. You can tell people the gospel or you can show them the gospel. And I think what we tend to do, we, we don't preach, we don't give out literature, we literally just we hope bring peace to somebody in their situation. I would hate to think that if one of my kids was ill, was after being in a row, was drunk or whatever, or my neighbor's kids or anybody, and someone passed them by and didn't help out, then I'd say, you know, I'd be really disappointed. So this is an opportunity to help out in a very practical way. Another volunteer who's been involved with street pastors in Ireland since day one is Cork native Anne Fitzgibbon. What was it that made you want to be part of this? Well, I suppose back in 2012, um, two of our four kids were young adults and, you know, they'd often come out at night and I suppose like most parents... You were worried mammy at home. <laughs> waiting for the key to be turned in the door and it was always a relief when that happened, so... You know, I just thought it was a great initiative to have, have people out who were just purely there to look out and, you know, just try and make sure that people got home safely and that nothing untoward would happen. And what is it you do, Anne, when you are out until three or four in the morning? Um, well, I suppose at the early part of the night, a lot of the time we'd, you know, interact with um, doormen, um, chat to people who were passing by, you know, saying hi, have a good night, um, things like that. Very often we'd meet, um, like, the people who um, sleep on the streets, the homeless people, a lot of them are regulars and you get to know them over time, so you'd stop and chat with them. And one of the things we do is we pick up, we pick up bottles and put them in bins okay. because basically they're potential weapons. So I mean, okay. f f just to give you a perspective, since we've started in 2012, we've binned over 23,000 bottles wow. um, and uh, swept up loads and loads of glass over the years. That someone could have grabbed. Absolutely, or, or broken, or broken yeah. glass when the girls are taking off their 16-inch heels at yeah. 3 o'clock in the morning. But it's just companionship, isn't it, and uh, a helping it, hand for anyone is. who might need it. Yeah, and that's what we're there out to, to listen, to care, and to help out in whatever way we can. I mean, I'm convinced from reading the Gospels that Jesus spent a lot of his time doing life with his disciples and with people he interacted with. And, you know, he's dem demonstrated to us how we can live life. And, you know, the nighttime economy is a huge part of Irish culture. 
Um, and as people of faith, we can either put our heads in the sand and ignore it, or we can get out into that space and, you know, come alongside people and demonstrate kindness and care to the people we meet. Just three years ago, Anne experienced a tragedy very close to home that in many ways serves to reinforce the purpose of the work they do. In 2016, your nephew Michael passed away here in Cork. What happened to him, man? He was out socialising um, in Cork City and um, he had too much to drink. Um, we understand that he um, stumbled a couple of times, including getting into a taxi and hit his head. He did try to make his way home, um, but um, he ended up in a field behind where he, near, near where he lived and basically took a wrong turn. And, you know, sadly he just... Um, he got lost in the dark. He got the lost, night. disorientated, and we didn't find him for two and a half days. Oh. The autopsy said there was um, hypothermia and, and brain swelling. It was just such a tragedy, something that should never have happened. But, you know, sadly, these are the reality. I mean, Michael wasn't the only young man to die on this after a, a night out socialising in Cork City over the past number of years. There have been others as well. And how does something like that affect the family? It was, it was just surreal, I suppose, you know, you, you, you see things happening to other people and you, or you hear about things and you think, you know, never should that hit our front door. Um, but sadly, I suppose this was a reality check that these things can happen to anybody at any time. You know, Michael intended to go home, he intended to go to work the next day, it just didn't happen. How did it change or challenge your own faith? I suppose, you know, I often feel that, that life is a journey and like on any journey there's twists and turns in the road and some, some turns you go around and they're welcome and bring happiness and everything is great and then there's other times that um, things happen and you wish they didn't, you know, and like this is the ultimate of, of what could go wrong. I, I suppose what I take comfort in, in is I often think of the, the Sermon on the Mount, you know, Jesus had a captive audience and one of the things, one of the Beatitudes he said is, blessed are those that mourn for they shall be comforted. And I suppose one thing I would take out of both this crisis and also other things that we go through in our lives that, you know, we, we it's not that the pain lessens or that things, everything is all right all of a sudden, but that we don't have to go through things on our own, that God wants to be with us on these journeys, you know. Lord, your word teaches us that the greatest command is to love the Lord our God with all our heart, soul and mind, and to love our neighbour as ourself. Help us to live in this reality day by day. Amen. This hour this moment, this day